So in this little Go mailing list application I've been building out just to learn more about Go and Temple, I needed to get this deployed somewhere. And one of the best ways you can deploy a Go application is to basically build your Go binary and throw that in a Docker container. And something I want to point out is that there's ways to make your container very small and optimized for basically pushing your containers up. It'll only take like a couple of megabytes of memory. And I want to walk you through my process of how I got that all set up. I think it's pretty interesting. So let's start with looking at the Docker file. Here's my project. The Docker file is using a Golang image. So on Docker Hub, you can use these Golang images that have all the necessary dependencies for running Golang and building your containers. And I'm using a multi-stage build here. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm bringing in this base image, which honestly, we probably don't even need to do. So let's just do a little bit of refactoring here. Boom, that's a little bit cleaner. And what we're doing is we're, first of all, we're setting a default work directory to slash app. So when the container is building, like you have just a file system, and we're saying we want to scope all of the things we're installing and the files that we copy over into this slash app folder. Um, and that's later on, we'll have to like use that when we host our app. Why is this one indented? That's kind of weird. Okay, so over here, we are installing a couple of things that I needed to get this working. So for example, uh, some build essentials, some Python. Now granted, I don't know if we truly need these things because I'm assuming some of these might be included in the Golang base, but uh, you know, it's like once you start adding stuff, you, it takes more time to go back and verify if you actually need it and uh, don't have all the time in the world, right? So the next thing we do is I'm installing Node. The reason I'm using Node in this project is because I am using Tailwind, the CLI tool to basically build and compile my Tailwind files so that I can output a public slash styles CSS that my project uses. I'm also using Daisy UI. So there's two dependencies that I need. And honestly, the easiest way I could think about doing this was using NPM. Now granted, these scripts, these could probably live in my make file instead of living inside of a package JSON if I wanted to simplify some stuff. But ultimately I needed Node to install those two packages. And then I need it to basically run the build process to compile all my Tailwind. I might spend some time to try to figure out a way to get rid of Node entirely, because I think that'll make this project a lot better. Um, but once I install those things, I also install the Temple CLI tool that's used for compiling my Temple files. So like in my project, I have a bunch of Temple files. And when you save the file, it basically generates a Go Temple, which is just a bunch of ugly looking Go code. But this is kind of like a, a step you have to use when you're using Temple because you have to have Go code at the end of the day. Go doesn't know how to read these temple files. Okay, so this is what the temple CLI is for. And then we copy over the Go mod and the Go sum and the package lock and the package JSONs into the container that we're building up. We install all the packages with NPM CI. Then we install all the Go packages with Go mod tidy. And then we copy everything over into this project here so that the container can actually like build it up. And then finally we run make build. So here is where it gets a little bit interesting. We have a make file here, which is, uh, you know, what a lot of like C and C++ projects use, um, but I guess Go people like to use it as well. But it's kind of like Grunt or Gulp or any type of build tool where you have like all these aliases you can set up and you can call make space build or make space dev and that'll run whatever commands you have here. So in our case, we have a make build, which is going to build all those Tailwind styles. It's going to generate all of our temple uh, Go files. And then it's going to build our Go executable. This is like the main takeaway I want to talk about in this video, where I had to turn on some flags here because I know what operating system I'm going to host this on, which is going to be Railway, which uses Linux. But I wanted to also make this a static binary so that like all of the dependencies that are needed will just be bundled into the Go container. And I think this is how you do it. See Go enabled equals false, which I think will not do dynamic libraries. Again, I'm still learning, so correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but that's going to output a app underscore prod binary. And I'm putting it in this location, bin slash app dot prod. Now, this is important because we're going to need this when we try to deploy to Railway or any other server host because the Docker file is going to have to reference it. Okay, so that's how the build works. I won't talk about the dev mode. I think this is not really related to what I'm talking about in this video. So now that we have the binary built and all the Tailwind styles built, we then say from scratch. This is very important. From scratch is basically like an empty container that has absolutely nothing on it. So it's like the smallest Docker image you could possibly have. And then we start copying over files from the builder. So over here we have the builder, which we're like building up stuff and installing stuff and compiling the binaries. But what you can do is you can say, okay, now give me a blank image and let's copy over the binaries and copy over the public assets. 
okay? And then we have some arguments defined so that we can actually like pass in from railway like how to connect to SQLite and what is the port you're going to be using in this uh, GoFiber application. But here's the final thing that is important to point out. This is how you tell Docker that when you run this image, you need to run this executable, which happens to live at slash app underscore prod. Okay, and so that's going to run the Go binary, which is like super small. And after all that, what you can do is for me, I'm using Railway. And so I have like this Railway project where I basically went over here, uh, linked to my GitHub repo. I clicked on Go mailing list. And then I went up and set up some environment variables. So we have like the database URL, the port, host name. So like when we send out an email and they unsubscribe from the email, we want to be able to let them know like where they should be redirected to. We have host name. Is this even used in our application? It is. So I think at the very bottom of the emails I send out, I have like an unsubscribe link. And we use this to know like what URL we have to redirect to. Sender email. This is like the email that we're going to be using from the from when you send out the email. Password. That is the password for logging into the site. Um, and then port, obviously. Now, now that I think about it, we don't even need these args because when I run in railway, these environment variables will automatically just be exposed to the running service. So I don't need to do args there. So now when you push code to your repo, Railway will automatically detect those changes because of the webhooks that they have behind the scenes that are hooked into GitHub. Um, but what this is going to do is it's going to analyze your project and find if you're using a Docker file. In our case, it does find that Docker file we've been kind of working on and it starts building it. And then it'll do like the runnable Im image at the end. And then it'll push the image in this and here's the cool part, because we're using Scratch, and the Scratch image has like nothing on it, it's like 25 megabytes. So the entire image is super fast to publish, and basically when your server needs to spin up, it's going to take 25 megabytes to basically pull that image down and run it. I'm sure there's ways to get this smaller, but I think the Go executable probably has a bunch of stuff bundled into it. So that might be like the, the, the smallest you can get it. All right, so now the project is running. It says it's active, and we can go to our production link refresh, and it is going to clear out that sessions map because of the way I'm doing authentication, um, but we can just go ahead and log back in. And I have a secure password here, and there we have it. We can go ahead and start like creating stuff. We can start adding emails, and then finally we can go and send out those emails. I do have to set up a secret key and an access token with AWS. I haven't done that yet. Um, I was waiting on getting this whole thing secured before I even allow this thing to try to send out emails. But I can do that next. And that's basically um, how you can get a Go application deployed out to Railway and have it use very, very, very little memory. So if you look at the project here and zoom in, I just deployed, it's using 13 megabytes of memory to run my Go application, which is pretty nice. So if you want to check out this code, go to my repo and then go to Go mailing list. Uh, all the code that I've been working on is here. Um, I just wanted to do this as a learning experience for myself. But you guys are welcome to take a look at this code and use it as well. All right, have a good day. Happy coding.